Economics is a trailblazing field of study that allows us to answer the essential questions relating to how consumers deal with scarcity, how corporations capitalize on consumer demand, how nations promote economic growth, and how to analyze production so as to maximize profits by minimizing costs. It's this latter idea that economists can delve into further using an innovative multivariable function, the Cobb-Douglas production function. Because the number of independent variables in the Cobb-Douglas production function are dependent on the number of factors that go into producing a single good, there are many ways to represent the function. But the most basic way is with two inputs, labor input, or person hours worked in a year, and capital input, a measure of all machinery, equipment, and buildings. Moreover, each input has a certain constant output elasticity, which is the percent change of output divided by the percent change of an input. If we let L represent labor input, K represent capital input, alpha represent output elasticity for labor, and beta represent output elasticity for capital, we yield the famous Cobb-Douglas production function for two inputs. F of L comma K is equal to Y is equal to A times L to the alpha times K to the beta. There are two things to note. First, alpha and beta are both constant because they are decided by the overall market. Second, assuming constant returns to scale, alpha plus beta is equal to 1. Assuming decreasing returns to scale, alpha plus beta is less than 1. And finally, if there are increasing returns to scale, then alpha plus beta is greater than 1. We can analyze this function in many different ways. One notable way is to examine how a change in one parameter will affect the total production, which we can easily do using partial derivatives. Suppose we want to analyze how total production changes as labor changes. We can take the partial derivative of y with respect to l to yield the function partial of y with respect to l is equal to a times alpha times l to the alpha minus 1 times k to the beta. Now recall that y is equal to a times l to the alpha times k to the beta. This will allow us to rewrite the right side of this function to produce the equation, the partial of y with respect to l is equal to alpha times y over l. This tells us that the rate of change of production with respect to labor will be equal to the output elasticity of labor times total production divided by labor. Likewise, we can take the partial derivative of y with respect to k to yield the function partial of y with respect to k is equal to a times beta times l to the alpha times k to the beta minus 1. Recall that y is equal to a times l to the alpha times k to the beta. This will allow us to rewrite the right side of this function to produce the equation the partial of y with respect to k is equal to beta times y over k. This tells us that the rate of change of production with respect to capital will be equal to the output elasticity of capital times total production divided by capital. We can also analyze this function graphically. When we plot the function on a 3D coordinate grid, we produce the following graph. Changing the output elasticities shows us how rates of change in production with respect to certain variables will lean toward one or the other axis, assuming that the other variables are kept constant. And changing the constant A shows us how we scale up or down our production. Finally, we can combine the Cobb-Douglas production function with input cost information to maximize output. Suppose a firm's production is given by the Cobb-Douglas production function, f of l comma k is equal to 20 times l to the 1 fourth times k to the 3 fourths, and the firm's unit labor and capital costs are $6 and $8 respectively. We want to maximize output we can produce given that we only have $288 to spend on total input costs. We can rewrite this question as follows. Maximize f of l comma k is equal to 20 times l to the 1 fourth times k to the 3 fourths, subject to the constraint 6 times l plus 8k is equal to 288. We first find the gradient of f, which is del f equals 5 times l to the negative 3 fourths times k to the 3 fourths, comma 15 times l to the 1 fourths times k to the negative 1 fourths. We can let our constraint equation be g of l comma k is equal to 6 times l plus 8k minus 288, so the gradient of g is del g is equal to 6, 8. We now have the equation del f is equal to lambda del g, or in other words, 5 times l to the negative 3 fourths times k to the 3 fourths, comma 15 times l to the 1 fourth times k to the negative 1 fourth is equal to lambda times 6, comma 8. Then we produce three equations, two of them containing lambda and one of them being our original constraint. We can solve the first two equations for lambda and then set them equal to each other to solve for one variable in terms of the other, and doing so is going to result in k being equal to 9 times l over 4.
Finally, we can plug this into our constraint to solve for our two parameters L and K, and we get L is equal to 12 and K is equal to 27. Thus, by using 12 units of labor and 27 units of capital, we maximize our production to F of 12, 27 is equal to approximately 440 units produced. Now, let's do something that is much harder. Suppose we want to minimize the total cost inflicted on our firm from multiple factors, not just labor and capital, using the Cobb-Douglas function and information about unit costs and output elasticities. Let's define a few things for our case. Previously, we said that if we have two inputs, such as labor and capital, then our production function is f of l, k is equal to y is equal to a times l to the alpha times k to the beta. We can generalize this to n inputs, such that y is equal to a times the product from i equals 1 to n of z sub i to the power of theta sub i, where z sub i is units of an input, such as labor or capital, and theta sub i is the output elasticity of that particular input, for a total of n inputs. Let's also define the total cost to be c is equal to the sum from i equals 1 to n of w sub i times z sub i, where we are simply summing the products of each unit cost by the number of units of input. So our question is, we have n sources of input for production, where z sub i represents the quantity of input, w sub i represents the unit cost of that input, and theta sub i represents the output elasticity of that input for i in range 1 to n. W sub i and theta sub i terms are constant. We want to produce y units of output. Assume production is scaled by some factor a. So what is the expression for z sub i in terms of y, a, any w sub i term, and any theta sub i term, such that the total cost of producing y units will be minimized? What is the expression representing the minimal cost in terms of y, a, any w sub i term, and any theta sub i term? So, using the two points we mentioned beforehand, the question transforms into a standard Lagrange multiplier problem. We want to minimize our cost function, c is equal to the sum from i equals 1 to n of w sub i times z sub i, subject to the constraint y is equal to a times the product from i equals 1 to n of z sub i to the power of theta sub i. We begin by redefining our constraint so that it is a function. So we can write f is equal to a times the product of i equals 1 to n, of z sub i to the power of theta sub i minus y. Next, we can create a Lagrange function L. So we define it as L is equal to the sum from i equals 1 to n of w sub i times z sub i minus lambda times a times the product from i equals 1 to n of z sub i to the power of theta sub i. We can now take partial derivatives of L. We take partial derivatives with respect to every z sub i term and then with respect to lambda. And when we do this, we end up with the partial of L with respect to z sub i is equal to w sub i minus lambda times a over z sub i times the product from i equals 1 to n of z sub i to the power of theta sub i, which we can then set equal to 0. And rearranging this gets us w sub i is equal to this expression. And we also want to take the partial of L with respect to lambda. So that is y minus a times the product from i equals 1 to n of z sub i to the power of theta sub i. And we can set that also equal to 0. And rearranging that equation gives us y is equal to a times the product from i equals 1 to n of z sub i to the power of theta sub i. Next, we can find each z sub i term in terms of z sub 1 and the other constants so that we can then plug each of them into the second equation to solve for z sub 1 and therefore for the other z sub i terms. Note that when we write w sub i is equal to this expression, we mean that we're actually splitting these up into w sub 1 is equal to everything sub 1, w sub 2 is equal to all of that sub 2, all the way to w sub n is equal to all that sub n. Let's divide each one of these equations by the first one. Then we will get w sub i over w sub 1 is equal to this expression divided by the expression that is equal to w sub 1. And when we cancel out certain terms and rewrite this as z sub i in terms of z sub 1 and other constants, we will get that z sub i is equal to theta sub i times w sub 1 over theta sub 1 times w sub i, and that multiplied by z sub 1. And note that this equality is still true when i equals 1, because z sub 1 is equal to theta sub 1 times w sub 1 over theta sub 1 times w sub 1, which cancels out to 1, and then multiplied to z sub 1, which is just z sub 1. Now that we have an expression for each z sub i term in terms of z sub 1 and other constants, Let's plug each of these back into the equation y is equal to a times the product from i equals 1 to n of z sub i to the power of theta sub i to find z sub 1. 
We can then use this to find the value for every other z sub i term. And finally, we can find the minimized cost. So we have y is equal to this expression, and then we can plug in what we got before for z sub i to yield this expression. And then we can factor out the z sub 1 to the power of that summation. And then finally, we can rearrange to solve for z sub 1 in terms of all these constants. Now that we have written z sub 1 in terms of our constants, we can find every other z sub i term answering the first part of our question. So if z sub i is equal to this expression, then we can plug in what we got before and we will get z sub i is equal to this lengthy expression. Now we have determined every z sub i quantity needed to minimize cost, which answers our first question. Now we can determine an expression for the minimum cost produced by using this combination of quantities. So all we have to do is plug all of this in now. So our original cost function is c is equal to the sum from i equals 1 to n of w sub i times z sub i. So plugging in what we got before for every z sub i gets us this large expression. And then we can factor out the term that includes y over a to the, to the power of that summation. And in the next step, we can cancel out some terms in that fraction. And finally, we can rewrite this, factoring out once again and getting this final answer. And so we have arrived at our answer, and this expression will minimize your production costs and save your business. The Cobb-Douglas production function is a nifty function that we can use in diverse scenarios, such as analyzing trends in production as they relate to factors like labor and capital. As we saw in the last case study, it becomes really useful if you want to minimize cost or even maximize profits. But it all comes down to hard-boiled calculus. My learning goal was to explore how multiverbal calculus can be applied in many different contexts, and the Cobb-Douglas production function is a great application of concepts relating to partial derivatives, 3D coordinate grids, multivariable functions, and Lagrange multipliers. It's also important to note that even though this was in the field of economics, it still relied heavily on calculus-based concepts, and that's because there's a large intersection between calculus and economics, because with economics, especially in microeconomics, we are always trying to maximize or minimize different money amounts. If you like this video, hit that like button, and a sub to the channel would be great. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.